the first one is fork and exec system call first let us see what is fork the fork system call which is used to, to create a duplicate process that means we are having a parent process and if we execute fork here then it will create a duplicate child process child this child is exactly similar to the parent okay this is what the purpose of fork now the problem is if one thread pro, uh, program that is program calls the fork does the new process duplicate all the threads or the new process single threaded okay whether the new fork system call will create the duplicate of all the threads are only one thread okay to overcome this particular problem linux system having two versions of fork okay the first fork will duplicate all the threads and the second version of fork will duplicate only the thread that invoked the fork system call okay and second one is the exec system call here the program specified the parameters to exec will replace the entire process which including all the threads this is the purpose of exec that means if we call exec then it will assign new work to this child process okay by uh, giving the parameters and assigning the different command to this child process this is, this is what the purpose of exec if we call this exec function after uh, the forking then the program specified in the parameter of exec will replace the process will replace the process then the duplicating of all the threads are unnecessary okay here the duplicating only calling thread is appropriate that is if we want to duplicate only one thread and that is enough we cannot dupli duplicate all the threads and however a separate process does not call exec after forking then the separate process should duplicate all the threads that is if we use fork then that will replace all the uh, that will create all the duplicate threads but this is not necessary the second issue is signal handling <coughs> what is mean by signal signal is used to notify a process that a particular event has occurred if one event has occurred immediately we will notification we will receive a notification that is called as signal here the signals are two types the first one is synchronous and second one is asynchronous and the signals types will be depends on the source and reason for the event so based on the event then we can receive either synchronous signal or asynchronous signal whether it is synchronous or asynchronous we need to follow the same pattern what is the pattern first one is the signal should be generated by the occurrence of particular event and the signal is delivered to the process once delivered the signal must be handled okay we have to generate the signal deliver the signal and handle the signal signal handlers uh, here uh, signals are handled by the signal handlers and we are having two uh, signal handlers are there first one is default uh, signal handler and second one is user defined signal handler when come to default signal handler which is handled by kernel and to handle all the uh, signals okay every signal is having a default signal handler and second one is user defined signal handler which is used to, to call a particular signal handler okay and the signals are handled in different ways some signals can be simply ignored for example uh, changing the size of window or simply ignored that will not cause any problem and some signals handled by terminating the program for example if there is illegal memory access signals comes then we have to handle this particular signal okay and next let us see the signals in single threaded and multi threaded program 
when come to single threaded this is uh, very simple and very straightforward okay signals are always delivered to the process because the process is having only one thread okay so delivering the signal to that particular thread is very easy and when come to multi threaded programming this is very very complicated okay because we have to deliver the signal to thread to which the signal is applied because a single process is having more number of threads so we have to identify the particular thread and we have to deliver that signal to that thread and second one deliver the signal to every thread in the process okay now we have to deliver the signal to all the threads and deliver the signal to only the certain threads in the process and assign a specific thread to receive all the uh, signals of process okay so to handle the thread in multi programming is very very difficult the third one is thread cancellation what is mean by thread cancellation that means terminating the thread before it has completed is called as thread cancellation okay here we are having two example first let us uh, try to search a particular data in the database then more number of threads will be created and everything will be search a particular data in the database suppose if one thread returns the result then the remaining threads should be cancelled okay this is one problem okay we have to cancel all the remaining threads and second one suppose if the user press a button in the web browser if we are going to load a web browser then in the middle the user press any one of the button then that will stop the web page for loading further okay that means if a web page loads means more number of threads will be executed each and every image is having a separate thread okay more number of threads will be run in the background suppose if a user press a stop button on the browser then all the loading threads should be cancelled okay uh, here the thread to be cancelled is called as target thread okay what is target thread the thread which is to be cancelled here cancellation may occur in two different scenario the first one is asynchronous cancellation asynchronous cancellation means the thread will be immediately terminate terminates the target thread okay this is called as asynchronous cancellation and second one is deferred cancellation means the target thread periodically checks whether the thread should be terminated or not otherwise it will allow some opportunity to terminate the thread by itself which is called as ordinary fashion okay so there are two different scenarios for cancelling a thread first one is asynchronous cancellation and second one is deferred cancellation the fourth one is thread local storage here all the threads will share the data that is if it is multi threading system the code and data and files are common for all the threads isn't it these three are common for all the threads that is this is the advantage of multi programming multi threaded programming but when come to some circumstances the thread might need its own copy of certain data for execution okay because there is no separate data for all the threads in some situation the thread requires its own copy of data which is called as thread local storage or otherwise tls here in the transaction processing system we have to service each transaction in a separate thread and each transaction might be assigned a unique identifier okay to associate each thread with its unique identifier we could use thread local storage this is the another issue in the threading okay because each and every thread we have to assign the thread local storage the last issue is scheduler activation here the problem is the communication between kernel and the thread library 
okay here the number of kernel threads should be dynamically adjusted to ensure the performance when we implement the thread library then the kernel thread should dynamically adjusted to give the best better performance here many system implementing either one to sorry many to many system or two level model okay many to many means many user level threads will be handled by many kernel level threads this is user thread and this is kernel thread and two level model means again one to one model okay the combination of many to many plus one to one is called as two level model okay here they should follow the intermediate data structure between user thread and kernel thread okay because many user thread will be mapped to many kernel threads isn't it for that they have to follow a separate data structure between user thread and kernel thread and this data structure is called as lightweight process or lwp that is lightweight process here in this diagram user thread should be run on the kernel hence we have to use this lightweight process and this is the virtual process virtual processor each lightweight process will be assigned to a separate kernel thread then only this particular process will execute on the physical processor okay if the kernel thread blocks means waiting for an io operation to be completed or some other purpose then this lightweight process should also be blocked hence this will also automatically blocked that will also block the user thread user level thread okay so this is the scheduler activations up to this we have seen the issues in thread that is thread issues so we have seen the five thread issues the first one is fork and exec system call signal handling thread cancellation thread local storage and scheduler activation so these five are some of the issues in the handling of thread and now this is the question time students please write the answer for what is thread cancellation in the comment box and in the next class we will see another important topic from second unit thank you